everyone. Welcome to Make Moments Matter, a music education podcast, where I share lesson ideas, songs, games, and inspiring things for your elementary music classroom. My name is David Rao, and I am the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org. This episode of the podcast is a replay containing the audio version of a Musical Mondays live video. If you're not familiar with Musical Mondays, every Monday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, I go live on Facebook and Instagram to share about the lessons that I'm using in class with my students. I give a recap of my kindergarten through fifth grade lessons and then do a deep dive about one grade level and share the books, instruments, songs, and process that I use to teach the lesson to kids. This podcast episode contains all the audio from the Musical Mondays video, but if you'd like to see a replay of the video itself, you can find a link to the archived video on YouTube when you click the link in the notes for this episode. Thanks so much for tuning in. Here's the show. Hey everyone, my name is David Rao, and I'm the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org. You can also find my ideas on Facebook, on Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, a variety of other places when you search for my name, David Rao, or Make Moments Matter. Um, I'm really excited to be sharing with you all tonight. I'm going to be talking in just a little bit about my fourth grade concert that's coming up, how I planned for it, what are the things that are a part of that, the songs that are involved, some of the extras and some of um, the planning that went into that. That's coming up in just a second. Um, A couple quick things to talk about before I jump into talking about that concert prep and all the things that are going to go into that. So first of all, if you hear me talk about a song, a link, a resource, something that you're like, that's so cool, I wish I knew more about that. I have a whole page on my blog dedicated to the links, the resources, everything I talk about in these videos. So you can either go to my blog, Make Moments Matter, org and you can search under the video tab or wherever you're watching listening to this you can click at the bottom of like the um, description and there should be a direct link to that page if you're interested um, also there's a Facebook group if you want to uh, learn more ask more questions you can search on Facebook for every moment matters music education community there's also a link for that on the links page if you're interested um, okay so this Saturday I'm gonna be in um, New York Um, I believe upstate is considered upstate. Um, It is the Albany area with the Berkshire Hudson Valley um, ORF chapter. I'm so excited to be there and sharing a workshop um, this Saturday morning. So if you're in the area, please come check it out. You can find more information on the links page or just search on Facebook or online Berkshire Hudson Valley ORF and you should be able to find all the details about that. It's going to be so much fun and that's at 9 to 1 um, this Saturday morning. And then the week after that is AOSA the American ORF Shulvrook Association National Conference. Um, I'm going to be presenting a couple sessions. I'm also just going to be there as a a member of AOSA, as a participant, Um, and as a KC resident. So I'm so excited that it's in my home city. Um, So if you are there and you want to come to my sessions, um, the uh, the one session I'm doing is Thursday uh, afternoon. That's um, sometime Thursday. That one's called Small Steps, Avenues for Improvisation, all about the things that we can do to help students along the way so they're um, comfortable with improvising and feel confident doing that and have the scaffolding they need. And then I'm also doing um, a session on Saturday that is I'm presenting it once and then I'm presenting it again, a repeat of that session. So, But if you see it on the schedule, it's on there twice, but it's the same session just two times. Um, and that's called Stories That Sing. That's all about literature you can use in the classroom, how you can incorporate that in sort of fun and um, authentic ways. That's AOSA National Conference. Now, because AOSA National Conference is in Kansas City, um, I have been sharing about some of my favorite things, some tips about coming to the city, some things you might consider. So on my Facebook page, um, which you can find if you search David Rao at Make Moments Matter, um, I have been sharing all sorts of tips and things that might be helpful about Kansas City. For example, I shared just today about local coffee shops you're going to want to consider because you're not going to want to go to Starbucks. You're going to want to go to the really good stuff. So I shared about some local uh, coffee shops you could go to. I shared about food that's close to the convention center, um, Mexican restaurants especially that are close to the convention center, barbecue places you could consider, other non-food things um, if you want to use Uber or Lyft. I have some tips and ideas about that. I talk about grocery stores in the area if you want to stock up on resources for your hotel room or want to get snacks or something for lunch. Um, I talk about museums and fun things to do in the area, how to get around on the Kansas City streetcar. All of that is on my... um, Uh, Facebook page. I've been sharing about like one basically idea a day. Um, Today was coffee shops. Tomorrow will be something different. So if you want some of those ideas, you're coming to Kansas City for a national conference. Check that out. 
Um, okay, and then uh, one more thing. Um, probably, oh, two more things. Okay, the first thing is that um, Samson, my Bassett slash Beagle slash Dachshund slash we're not sure, um, is with me tonight. So if you hear a little pause or someone chewing on um, a little wishbone toy or you see him pop up, He's here. Just just be aware of that. Or you hear me like nicely, hopefully reprimanding him to get down or whatever. That's why. Um, and then the other thing is I probably will not be on next week because next week, Monday night is Halloween. And so I know a lot of y'all will be busy that night. I'm sure I'm going to be fielding doorbells all night that night, um, handing out kid candy to the kids in my neighborhood. There are a lot of kids in my neighborhood. Uh, somebody When we moved in, they were like, yeah, we think there are 75 kids within a four block radius, 75 kids. I think they even set elementary or younger. That's a lot of kids. Anyway, so uh, hope, I'll probably not be on next Monday because it's Halloween and I'll be busy handing out the candy. Um, okay, so that's all of the uh, the stuff, the uh, housekeeping stuff. Let's talk about um, programs and let's talk about um, uh, specifically, I'm going to talk about my fourth grade concert, which is coming up, and then um, talk a little bit about concerts in general, but then I'll go through the specifics of what songs I'm doing and why, and some of the ways I'm souping up some of those songs to make it more exciting, um, more fun for parents, and fun for kids along the way. So generally, concerts. Uh, there is no right or wrong way to share a public performance with parents. I'll just say that again. There is no right or wrong way. Whether your show is more of a like a musical or if it's more of a showcase for students, if it's more art music, if it's more whatever. I think that there is a place for all of that in the elementary music classroom, the elementary music realm. Um, in fact, I try and by the time my kids leave my school, I want them to experience sort of a like stand and sing on the risers. I want them to experience something that's mostly movement based, folk dance, dancing with their parents, things like that. I want them to experience something that's more of like a musical um, with lines and, and sets and, co well, maybe not sets, costumes, things like that. I want them to experience something that is more performance based where they get to play on the instruments and share with students. And by the instruments, may, I mean like pitch percussion, maybe drums, maybe hand drums, maybe non pitch, but they get to share stuff that's more integrated, more involved. Um, and then, and, and, and then all along in the spectrum, but I want students by the time they leave my classroom to have experienced all of that and to, at some point in their career, have shared some of that with their parents. Now at my current school, I share, um, programs for first, second, third, fourth, and fifth grades. I have K through five in my building. It is not an expectation to have anything for kindergarten. Praise the Lord, because it just so much happens in kindergarten. It'd be hard to get them ready to share something uh, with parents in that first year. I've done it in other schools. I've done it, um, but it's not an expectation at my school to do that. And I love it because then we can just spend the whole year exploring and playing, having fun and, um, and experiencing it together. But I want to go back and say, whatever you decide to do in your school, there is no one right way to share with parents. It's really honestly what works best for you, what works best for your school community, what shares some of that authentic music making you're doing in your classroom with parents. Um, yeah, do what you do and then, you know, be influenced by other people and be inspired by other people, but don't feel like you have to do it a certain way because there is no one right way to do a concert. Okay, that said, concert can be, a, can be a lot of stress, can be a lot of planning, can be a lot of thought. And so I brought up my favorite coffee mug with coffee in it because I'm cold because it's raining in Kansas City today. Um, but this is my favorite mug for when I need inspiration. You got this. And um, sorry, if you're listening to the podcast, you can't see it. But it's, it's a fun, cute little mug and says, you got this. Because guess what? You do. And no, like I said, no matter what you share in your concerts or in your performances or in your informances or whatever you call it, um, is the probably the right thing for your for your students. Just keep thinking every year about how can I change this? How can I adapt this? How can I make this more um, authentic and fun for my students? But just in general, no stress. You got this. Even though I, I say that as I'm currently stressed. <laughs> concerts. Okay, so... Um, uh, one thing I will say, if you are new to a school or if there has been like a long standing tradition of the fourth grade always does blah, blah, blah. The fifth grade always does blah, blah, blah. Um, and, and you do and you like that. Great. 
um, if if you get, get to a school and they're like, the fourth grade is always done, blah, blah, blah. The fifth grade is always done, blah, blah, blah. This certain way. And you don't like it, then you can change it. I would just say do that slowly. I would say don't go in and change literally every tradition that has happened at the school in one year. Change things slowly. Change one thing at a time. Maybe pull out one song. Maybe make one little change, one little thing. Um, because, you know, there, there are only so many things you can do in a year. And I think sometimes we decide like, this is my, I'm going to take this stand. This is what I'm going to do. But it's like, make those changes slowly over time because those people who are like, it's always been this way. Guess what? They're not always going to be there. And so it's okay to make changes slowly over time, especially if you're basing them off of what's best for my students. And you can use that, that, um, you can use that justification of, you know, I don't know if this is best for our students or what, what about this other thing? I know this is the way it's always been done. Can we maybe change a couple things? But I would just say, I walked into a school that is, that, I heard from a couple people, well, we've always done this with this grade. We've always done this with this grade. Um, and so making changes can happen. You can do that. Just do it slowly. Um, so for example, my fourth grade, when I got to the school a couple years ago, they said, well, fourth grade has always done the Veterans Day program. And that is not true because <laughs> I found scripts for and plans for a second grade Veterans Day program a couple years ago. So I know it has not always been fourth grade. So, um, uh, and even if it has, doesn't mean that that can't change. So for me, um, the, the people that gave me this expectation, well, fourth grade has always done this thing around or on Veterans Day. And that's cool, but I don't do the same show every year. I know there's some people who are like, every year we do the the state program or the we every year we do the blah, blah, blah. It's always the same. That's just what we do. Cool. And if that works for you, great. I get so bored doing that because concerts are, it's so much planning and so much work and, and repetition that like, if I did the same one every year, I would get tired of it. Now, have I repeated some things? Sure. There are a couple of shows that I've really liked that I'd done at one school and then I moved to a new school and I was like, hey, I can redo that thing and I already know the music and it's going to be fresh and new for these kids and that's great. But I year to year, things change. And because they, you know, when I moved to the school, they're like, well, fourth grade's always done Veterans Day. There is only so much patriotic music I can do in a concert and retain my sanity. Because first of all, a, a lot of the patriotic music um, is tricky to teach. Um, there's a lot of religious references in some of our um, more traditional patriotic songs. The range is not always great. Um, a lot, some, some of them come from a very troubled period and may or may not have problematic references. I mean, like there, there are things about our patriotic songs that are I interesting to discuss in a philosophical setting. But when you're talking about classroom use, it's not, that's not always the best music to teach to younger voices. Um, just because of, again, the range, um, uh, maybe the context for the songs, I don't know. Some of the language is very tricky to teach them to exp to explain so they can understand because it's our, not necessarily archaic, but it's older language. So, I mean, th those are all things to think about. Um, for me, I, there's only so much patriotic music I can do before I get like bored because again, I feel limited to the, just a few songs that I can do and then how much can I do them? And then, so um, for me, I was like, I want to make some changes <laughs> slowly to this. So last year I did a patriotic program and it, it was um, uh, there. It was like, you know, we did America the beautiful where, you know, we did one of the uh, verses with sign language and that was super fun. Um, I think I actually shared about my plans and prep for that last year. So I'll try and find that on the links page from last year and link to that video in case you're interested where I like break down and talk about all the songs. Um, we did a song from um, our textbook series. We pulled out and adapted that. Um, called America the Free. I've always called it um, the voice of America. It's sort of a fun song to set the tone for the concert. We did a veterans um, song. We did uh, 1550 United States. I mean, we did a, a good, um, a, sort of a, a, an interesting spectrum of songs, but it was right on Veterans Day. Um, 
and, and it worked pretty good. But this year I was like, I can't do that exact same program. And also last year, at that time, we were not inviting the public in because it was in, still in the middle of COVID. And so it was just for our school community and we streamed it online. And so I was like, even if I did that same exact set of songs, I can't do it the same way. We got to, you know, we can make it more interactive. We can make it more fun. How are we going to do this? Um, and so I decided this year, instead of it being like a, a Veterans Day program, because it wasn't actually on Veterans Day last year, it literally fell on Veterans Day. But this year it wasn't. I was like, we can still have a veterans element. It can still be sort of themed around America, but I, I want to change some things. So this year I'm calling it Every State is Great. It's a focus on the states, which means that, yes, you can do patriotic, like you know, the United States, but you can also do more of a focus on a certain state maybe specifically our state, the state we're in, you know, so then I can pull in some things that are maybe more aligned with uh, themes and um, ideas in Kansas, but also can do something patriotic, but also can do um, veterans, but also can do, so it's just sort of um, more of a conglomeration is instead of just focused on just patriotic and veterans, it's now sort of more general um, about the states. And then what else can you do with that? And so let me run through the songs that we're going to do and talk a little bit about each one um, and then sort of share sort of the process for that and um, some of the extra things in, involved in that. So um, the first song we're going to do is this song called Hats Off to America. It's one that I learned when I student taught, um, but it's a super fun song. I don't have the publication information at home with me today. So when I find that at school tomorrow, I'll put that on the links page. It, um, but it is um, a two-part song. It's an octavo, honestly. But it it's fun because it has a spoken part where you speak the Pledge of Allegiance. It has can, canonic um, moments where uh, the Pledge of Allegiance is not just spoken, it's sung, but it's sung in canon. There's also um, a partner song where you have verse one on top of verse two. That all goes together. Um, there's You take those themes and you slow them down. Um, and so sort of instead of just the main melody, you sort of pull it out and lengthen out each note. So that's another cool um, musical moment for kids. So it's actually teaching a lot of fun musical concepts and it does fit right in with the theme. So I, I love that song. I will find the composer and the publication information. I'll link that on the links page, but it's not new. It's very old. Um, and then, so what my students are going to do is we're going to talk, it's called uh, Every State is Great. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do this thing where the students come out and they have a speaking part, which I wrote the script and um, it's silly and full of puns. But um, they're saying we're going to do the great state debate where each, um, each class gets to do uh, a different song from a different state. And then we're going to let the audience decide what their favorite is. Um, well, this is all rigged, right? Like that's, we're not actually going to let like one homeroom win. You'll see in a second, but, um, they decide, well, we can't do one for each state. That'd be 50 songs. You know how let's take forever. So they just chose, since I have four homerooms, they, ch we, they chose, we chose, uh, four favorites. And so each one is going to sing a short snippet of that song and try and get the audience to vote for them by clapping for them the loudest. So the first one we're doing is deep in the heart of Texas, um, which is fun because we're going to make it interactive and have the audience clap along. Um, the stars at night are big and bright, bah, 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 deep in the heart of Texas. So it's going to be super fun. The audience is going to clap along in the second the second run through of the song. Um, so that's going to be a crowd pleaser. Um, we're going to another class is doing "You Are My Sunshine," which actually was originally written by the former governor of Louisiana. So they're going to sing that one, and then they're going to sing it one time through, and then they're going to all like oh, like look like they're very sad, and we're going to say, "Oh no, parents." Parents, we need the the light of your love or but the light of your phone camera to help brighten up these little sunflowers and and so then uh they're gonna the parents are gonna be encouraged to turn on their phone camera their their phone flashlights and then all the kids will like perk up and sing and then they will have hidden flashlights that pu they'll pull out and they'll do so again silly but fun but we're also teaching sort of a standard um in there uh, the next class is going to do Give My Regards to Broadway, um, which is, again, like, okay, well, we've done some sort of more rural songs, and now we're doing something more about the cities. Um, and then the last song is going to be Clementine. Um, oh, my darling. Oh, my darling. So we I actually talked about that class about the gold rush. And we talked about all of that. We talked about parlor songs. It was super fun. And then um, in that song, they're going to, you know, try and be so sad about the song because Clementine. And then so that it 
it's not just a song about death. They're going to pull out actual Clementine fruits and they're going to sing to those and hopefully make the audience laugh. Well, again, so each class is going to try and entice the audience to vote for them. Um, and then we're, we're going to say we like have like a, you know, someone like the laugh o meter like the clap o meter like using their arm to show like where which class wins. And then it's going to be rigged so that they all tie. And then as a tiebreaker, we're going to do our state song. The Kansas state song is Home on the Range. And so that is going to be the crowd favorite and then all the classes will win. So it's not like, you know, like, oh, well, Miss Johnson's class, you know, Miss Johnson's not a fourth grade teacher. Miss Schaefer's class won or, you know, Miss Sudek's class won. Okay, but it's not going to be that. It's going to be like, we all won because Home on the Range and hopefully we'll, the parents will sing along to that one. They will be encouraged to participate with that. Um, so that's the great state debate. So again, it's like, it's it's a fun yeah, it's about the states, and we're we're discussing different things, but it's going to be songs that the parents know. It's going to be songs that the, hopefully the kids know or will know, and um, it'll be sort of fun, like, oh, it's competition, and they can be, like, silly, and then it also means that you can feature one class at a time. So those parents who are like, I didn't get a good photo of my kid. Well, guess what? They were front and center for the for their class song, you know? So every class, every kid gets a chance to shine in there, which gives you more of a chance for, um, you know, for that moment for kids plus also then you are uh bulking out your program so because like i'm only doing like one verse of each of those songs but each class gets their own one so i'm teaching I, it's not like i'm teaching less i'm just teaching different songs to different classes and then that makes my program just a little bit longer and it does give more of a focus to each class and um i'm not teaching the same song to every class. It's like they, you know, one focuses. So it's sort of like a, I'm not gonna say a cheat, but it's a special way so that you can have, each class gets their own feature, but then also, you know, you're um, sort of adapting the way the concert works. Okay, then we're gonna do this uh, silly song uh, based on a super duper old joke. What did Della wear? She wore a New Jersey. Uh, so Music K8 has a, um, a, a sung version of this joke and there are four verses we're only going to use three and so what we're going to do is we're going to do the first verse what did Della wear she wore a new jersey um and then there's uh why did california she called to say hawaii uh and then the final verse is what did tennessee she saw what arkansas in between where the third verse should be um i'm telling the kids oh we're having professional comedians who are going to come in and tell jokes about the states that is not true what i have done is i have secretly emailed out to all their parents and said dear dad joke tellers whether you be a dad or mom or whatever um people who like silly puns uh please sign up and uh you get to stand and embarrass your students and tell a joke at the concert so the professional comedians are going to be their parents secretly who are kind of come up and take the microphone and tell a joke and i am prepping all my classes so as we're learning the song it's like well the professional comedians are going to come up and if you when they tell the joke you're going to do this and you're going to like put your hand to your ear or like listen real careful and then when the punchline happens which is where the end of the joke is if you think it's funny you got to go ha 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 and laugh and if you don't think it's funny you got to go oh brother or like roll your eyes and be like oh no and so um that i'm prepping them with a couple of random jokes to know what to do but there are going to be a couple kids who surprise their parents are going to be the ones telling the jokes so I'm so excited about that. I can't wait for that moment to happen, but I'm going to be there vamping on the piano in between. There is a recording if you want, but I'm going to be there vamping on the piano while these, you know, parents tell the joke. You could change it in lots of different ways. For our school performance, it's going to be uh, teachers who are going to do it, but uh, you could even have students come up and tell the jokes, but it's going to be sort of fun. Then uh, we're going to do a, a song that is veterans focused. It's called The Lights of Freedom. This is another Music K8 song. I'll talk about Music K8 in just a second. Um, it's another Music K8 song. Um, both What Did Delaware and uh, Lights of Freedom are recommendations from y'all. So last year and earlier this year, um, as I was planning for this, I put a question on either my Facebook page or on that group, Every Moment Matters Music Education Community, saying like, hey, what are your favorite um, songs about states or what are your recommendations, blah, blah, blah. And um, I got the recommendation of Lights of Freedom from someone who out there was listening as a part of this community and also what to Delaware. I found that from folks out there. So thank you so much. Um, 
Lights of Freedom, what are we doing with it? It's a super fun little song. Um, the original version from Music K8, um, there's like a, there's an introductory little verse, um, and then there's the second verse, and then they go through, and every measure that plays during this instrumental part, they read the name of a state. Well, we don't need that because we're doing the 50 Nifty United States. And instead, I want this to be veterans focused. So on the re recommendation of the person who recommended this song to me, instead of saying the names of the states, we're going to say, um, the army is the, you know, blah, blah, blah. And the army national guard do blah, blah, blah. And, uh, if you are, if you are a veteran or you know some, or if you are currently in the army or army national guard, or you are a veteran, please stand. Oh, pl plus also I'm having parents send in photos um, of family members who either could be there or maybe can't be there who are a part of the Army or Army National Guard. And I'm going to play it on a slideshow and it's going to have their name and um, the branch they're a part of. Um, and so parents are sending those in. I did this last year. It was super cool. And then also, um, you know, maybe it was great grandpa and he passed away in World War One, Or maybe it was, you know, my cousin, but he lives in California and he served in whatever, you know, so it's fun to be able to mention those people even if they can't be there and have their photo up there. So that's something that's going to play as we sing um, and go through. And then the last song is the 50 Nifty United States. Um, it is a perennial favorite. It's a great song um, and my kids will sing it all about it. In fact, the librarian sent me a video the other day. She was like, they're singing it again in here. <laughs> Actually, that was not the way she said it. She said, oh my gosh, they're singing it. They just did it on their own. So um, I know they like the song. It's one that's going to stick with them. Um, and so I know some people hate the song, but I like it. Um, I didn't get to sing it in elementary school and I like it now. So that's one that we're going to sing and that's our closer. Uh, plus also, I think a lot of the parents know it. Now, let me go back and talk about two things, 50 Nifty and Music K8. I want to talk about both of those things. Um, and then I'll talk about the uh, extras that are going around the concert. So the first thing, 50 Nifty United States, um, is uh, it's one of those songs some people are like, Ugh, I don't know, it's like not the most artful song or whatever. But like, guess what? It makes kids love music. It makes them want to sing with their friends on the bus. It makes them... It, it is something that you can mention to a group of adults and group of adults who are like, I can't sing. They will do it now. And so whether or not this is like art song of the millennium doesn't matter in my head because it is a song that they want to sing, that they will sing, that even adults who are, you know, like, I don't want to stand in front of others and do it will sing. It's one of those songs that has broken through the barrier. And so in my head, it, that makes it an amazingly great song to teach to students over and over and over and over until I can't stand it anymore because it just brings out so much joy for them. Also, I searched 50 Nifty United States just for fun. And I found a video of Lin-Manuel Miranda singing it um, uh, before the, you know, before Hamilton, when he was on Broadway, he would do these like afternoon pop out, sing things. And this was one that he did. He and Jonathan Groff sang their, their favorite songs from elementary school. Lin-Manuel Miranda sang 50 Nifty United States, which I thought was hilarious. Um, and then Jonathan Groff sang his favorite song from elementary school. It is a music K-8 song from like volume seven. And it just made me think, again, music K-8, I think is a resource that we sometimes undervalue as music educators. And we absolutely need to value it because I remember like there are songs that my friends and I my, like we go to class reunions or whatever. And everyone's like, do you remember Jaws of the Jurassic? Do you remember seeing that in Mrs. Riddick's class? Or do you remember blah, blah, blah. Um, and so many of these great songs are Music K8 songs that have been around for so long. And I remember when Mrs. Riddick would be like, all right, put in the cassette and we're going to play and sing along to blah, blah, blah. It, and it just brought us so much joy at the time. It brings me joy thinking about it now. But even as a music educator, I'm like, there are some great songs. Like The Lights of Freedom is one that we're going to do on this concert. That's a super great one. Um, the song that Jonathan Groff was talking about is an amazing song for um, like winter. He's, his favorite one is called Perfect Winter Day. It's a, par it's a partner song where like one verse is we love snow and the other one is we hate snow and then they sing it together. It's a, it's a hilarious song from like volume seven music K8. It's been around a long time. So if you are on the fence about music K8, get a subscription for 
the current year. It's totally worth it. It's not that much money. It's great to have the volumes and the CDs and everything in your library. So if you want to go back and get it, you can. Um, if there's a song that you're like, oh man, I really want that song, but I don't own that. You can buy singles. Like you can buy just the song and they'll sell you a reproducible kit, which is like the print music plus a lyric sheet and a CD if you want, or a digital download. You can do um, that with almost all of their songs. So if you find one on their website, which is, I think, musikk8.com. Hold on. I'm going to just check and make sure. I don't want to lie to you. Um, yeah, musikk8.com, which also, if you don't know Music K8, you, it's sometimes you see Plank Road Publishing. It's the same. Just you're in the right place. But um, you, can re you can get their magazine, which comes out there five issues a year. You can buy individual issues. Um, you can buy individual songs. All those things. So again, I know some people don't love Music K8, fine. But I would say, again, there's so many great songs, things that like I still get stuck in my head now that I know, like even now, if I, I bet if I taught Jaws of the Jurassic to my kids, they would flip and their, their brains would explode. They'd think it's so cool. And that was like 20 years ago that I learned that song. So anyway, it's there's some really fun things in there. Um, let's see, uh, Holly and Karen are talking about it on Facebook right now. They're saying you can buy individual songs. You can do the digital download and print them. Um, you can buy the, like I said, you can buy like a subscription. So you get all of the, like there's, there comes a physical magazine if you want it. It's not really a magazine. It's just like a, um, a, basically a collection of songs for every two months. So it has a bunch of songs, sometimes poems, sometimes just recorder pieces or boom whacker pieces. Sometimes it's more of like an octavo sort of a situation, but there's, you can buy that. And so like every year I get a subscription for that. So that music just comes to me with CDs, with all that, but you can always go back and buy back issues if you're interested. Okay, cool. So I just love that I found that video of Lin-Manuel Miranda and Jonathan Groff and they're like, what are your, um, you know, favorite elementary songs and it came out 15 50 United States and a song from music K8 called snowy winter day I, uh, or perfect winter day. I love it. it. It made me so happy. It's on the links page. If you want to go watch it, you totally can. Okay. So, um, a couple things that are going around this concert. So extras. So, um, my, I'm integrating with, uh, my team, my specials team. A lot of times the art teacher at my school will do themed art around whatever the theme for the concert is. So if it's the ocean, the kids in that grade will do like ocean themed art, um, where like basically she takes the concept she was probably going to do anyway, and then just like does makes the setting like the ocean or whatever, or, or sometimes she'll do special things just for the concert. And then they put that out in the hallway so parents can see that when they walk through, which is always cool. Um, and I, that's something that's sort of easier to integrate. If I say like, here's the themes for the year, she can plan that into her long range planning. But I've always thought like, what could we do with like my library and my tech teacher? Like, how could we integrate that? Um, uh, because also my PE teacher and I now are planning like a folk dance concert. So another integration, which is great. What can I do with library and tech? Well, this is a concert all about the States. So the librarian with all of the fourth grade classes, they're spending some time researching the States in library, using all the resources and things in library, digital resources, print resources to find information about States. And then in tech, um, in our tech class, they're creating a PowerPoint slide that has a couple little facts about the state, maybe a picture of the state um, and something about that. And then what we're going to do for the concert is I'm going to have a QR code so that when parents get there and drop off their kid and, you know, they're sitting in the gym for 10 or 15 minutes, they can scan the QR code and they'll be able to get onto the PowerPoint for their students um, and flip through the slides, see their students' slides, see the research they've created. We could print it out, um, but paper's at a premium and why not use the tech that we're learning about? So um, on their phones, you know, instead of just sitting there, uh, you know, checking Facebook or whatever before the concert, they can go through. And then that's something they could share with parents or grandparents who are far away or whatever. Um, and it's just sort of another fun connection. It, and it, that was something that I, I mentioned to my um, my team, and they were like, "Yeah, let's do it." So um, if you if you want, there's some really cool things like that, that you can do. Um, like I said, there's going to be a lot of participation in this concert of parents, either you know, like interacting, clapping, reacting. Um, with students as things are happening. There's also parents who are going to be coming up and telling jokes. There are parents uh, who are going to be sending in photos. So my hope, again, is that even though um, this is maybe not the exact way they've done things for years and years, that it does integrate uh, the whole school community and is something fun um, for everybody. 
Okay, that's my big fourth grade concert. That's coming up uh, in just a couple weeks, like three weeks too soon. Um, and so then on my fifth grade concerts in December, I have three more in the spring. Um, if you have any other thoughts or ideas about, hey, here's what I would throw into my patriotic slash state slash whatever theme concert, um, please go and put that on the uh, the conversation on Facebook or Instagram or wherever you're watching, listening to this. Add your comment. Even weeks and months later, people sometimes see... Um, they see the the comments and it's really helpful. So any any sort of comment or idea you can post would be so helpful. Um, like I said, I'm really lucky we're doing the great state debate and then we're gonna end with our state song. If you live in a state where you're like, our state song is like, it's no good. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, Home on the Range is a pretty great song to like have as your state song um, because it's like iconic and it fits our state so well and people know it. Um, but if you're like, oh, I don't know, we're good to, you know, like you can adapt and change that however you want. You can do whatever you want. Um, but that's that's something sort of fun for our students that we get to do since we're here in Kansas. Um, let's see. Rebecca on Instagram says, can you post your dad jokes? Uh, I not. You mean all of my dad jokes for all of my classes? I'd be happy to do that uh, because I do love puns. I'm assuming you mean for just that one song. Um, I'm actually leaving it up to parents. I'm saying submit your name and a joke. And I, I gave an example of a joke that was is state themed. And the example I gave to parents in the email was, um, did you hear about um, the fisherman from Maine who uh, was late to work too many times? Yeah, she lobster her job. The kids like groan at that. They think it's terrible. So um, that's like one example that I, I give to the parents. Um, there are a couple others that you can find um, online. But the tricky thing is, and why I'm having parents submit their jokes when they submit their name, is that like some of those state jokes, if you just like search state jokes, um, you can find some really raunchy, terrible jokes that like kids shouldn't see. And so that's why I'm not like, hey, kids, go research some. That's why I'm like, oh, we're having professional comedians come in to share. And I'm letting like the parents sort of filter that through first. Um, there's, uh, oh gosh. Uh, I mean, there, there are a couple other ones that are, um, it's, it's tricky because some of them only work in print. Like, uh, did you hear about the state that's in between Kansas and, and Texas? It's okay. Oklahoma. Okay. Any, um, okay. There, <laughs> there are a couple other ones that, again, kids wouldn't get. Um, there, there's like one that's like, how long does it take to get from um, dot, dot, state to state? And they're like, one Mississippi. Kids don't get that because they don't say one Mississippi, two Mississippi anymore. But there, I mean, there are some, there are some jokes in there. Anyway, so I'm having parents submit. But if you do a Google search of like state themed puns, you can find a lot. Some that are appropriate, some that are not. <laughs> okay, well, that's my, basically my fourth grade program that's coming up. Um, like I said, if you have comments or ideas, please post those in the comments. Just one quick cycle back before I say goodbye. Um, if you are in the Albany, New York area and you want to come join us for the Berkshire Hudson Valley ORF chapter workshop this Saturday, we'd love to have you. Um, it's I'm so excited to be um, heading out east for that. Uh, workshop this Saturday. And then if you were coming to Kansas City for AOSA National Conference, the National Conference of the American Orf Schulberg Association, um, it's in Kansas City. It's going to be great. If you're coming, um, please check out my Facebook page, David Rao and Make Moments Matter. I'm posting every day um, another tip, another idea, something about if you're coming to Kansas City, here's what you should know. I've already posted my favorite barbecue restaurants. I've already posted favorite coffee houses that are in walkable distance from the convention center. I've talked about where to get groceries. I've talked about uh, how to use Uber and Lyft, um, all sorts of things. There are going to be new tips every day. So um, check it out. Ask questions if you're interested. I'd be happy to talk about my city. I love Kansas City. Okay. Thanks so much, everyone. I'm not going to see you next Monday night because it's Halloween and I know that you're going to be busy. I'm going to be busy. Um, so I'll probably see you in two weeks. I hope you have a great time with your kids this week. Thanks so much for spending your Monday night with me. Bye everyone.